In every election season in the United States, residents in the territories of Guam, Northern Mariana Islands, American Samoa, U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico address numerous recurring topics, ranging from their national identity to being unable to vote for president. Eagle News correspondent Irish Dale Radom from our EBC Micronesia Bureau has more. I believe that uh, the status quo is okay as far as our relationship with the United States and being a territory. The president is, is the symbol of democracy and a free nation. And uh, people do not realize Guam is a part of that. So it only depicts the situation we're in. We, we're not able to vote for him. We might as well not be a part of him, right? Under current law, American citizens who claim residency in one of five U.S. territories are not entitled to participate in the presidential elections. One of those territories in the West Pacific is the island of Guam. Given the recent 2020 elections and ongoing uncertainties, Americans in Guam like Lawrence Payne share his frustration for not being able to take part in the said election process. Well, it's a conflict of many layers. Uh, one, uh, taxation without representation is uh, the loudest cry. So we pay taxes on Guam, yet uh, we do not have a voice of empowerment that dictates um, the level of tax or the amount of tax. So therefore, <clears throat> that's one of the biggest uh, hurts. That we pay tax without proper representation. Meanwhile, in American Samoa, the question of whether to remain as a territory or as an independent country comes and goes. Many of the residents here prefer things the way they are, while others focus more on immediate issues. I just don't think uh, independence is in uh, the future for us. I don't think uh, we have the resources that it takes to be independent, which is, with me, fine. Um, I think the money that we get from... Uh, United States, as far as uh, supplying, you know, much of our economy, um, is deserving. I hear a lot of talk sometimes about American Samoa being a welfare state, and for me, that's farthest from the truth. I think it's just a matter of the relationship that the United States chose with us, um, and it makes them responsible. Probably make things uh, work towards a better future. I think uh, immigration would be at the top of the list. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can address, but I think immigration is a big problem, particularly when it comes to our economy. Um, and when I say that, I mean that there's a lot of money that's leaving our economy, leaving the island, um, because of the people we have here as far as immigration. I know it's a necessity, but if you look at the groups here, like for example, with the Filipino community, if you ask them how much of their paycheck stays here and how much of their paycheck leaves the island, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a surprising number that's probably not going to benefit the people of American Samoa. And that goes for the Chinese, who's probably the worst offenders. I think I wouldn't be surprised if over 90% of their money leaves off island and isn't stay, you know, isn't in the economy here locally. And then you have, you know, our own brothers and sisters from the independent state of Samoa, where 80% of them, you know, make up the factory workers at the canneries, and most of their money gets sent back. So I think uh, immigration needs to be looked at. I'm not saying to stop immigration. I'm just saying that we need some kind of control over immigration to try and stop the hemorrhaging of the money, you know, that's leaving the islands and stuff. Better management of the grants that we get for the advancement of our people. Um, it's one thing to get money from the U.S. It's another to make sure that that money is being used properly for the advancement of our people. Uh, another thing, a lot of that money needs to be more put in our education. Uh, we are losing our youth. We need more of our, our youth to go into colleges to get more educated, to get more knowledge, so they can come back and run this country better. At present, more than 3.5 million U.S. citizens reside in America's territories in the Caribbean or the Pacific. 
If ranked among the 50 U.S. states based on population, overseas Americans would be larger than 22 other states in the Union. Reporting from the island of Guam, I am Irish Silverdam, EVC News. We live in interesting times.